Welcome. This is the midterm review for the Algebra 1 Part A class. This is the non-modified version. So if you're in room 1209, you're on the right review. If you're in 1204, watch the other one. But uh, anyway, I thought I'd come in and do seven quick questions, try to cover all the types that you'll see on the test, or at least most of the ones. Some of the ones are so easy, I didn't even bother. So I thought I would start, shockingly, with number one. Let me just flip it into a view that's much easier to see. There we go. Now, in this problem, I've got an absolute value and equality right here. So what I need to do is split that problem into two statements that I can solve. I can't solve an absolute value without splitting it into two parts. The first one, I'm going to take what's in the absolute value and I'm going to set it equal to whatever's already there, so less than or equal to 45. On the other one, I need to keep what's in the absolute value and then for the other one, I need to change the sign on the number, so negative 45, and flip that inequality over to make it greater than. I can solve here. Strike 5 from both sides. It gives you 40. Bring down negative 5v here. Divide by negative 5. Now remember, if I divide by negative, like I did here, I need to flip over the inequality. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Bring down my v. This gives me negative 8. On the other side, Track 5. That makes this negative 50. Bring down my negative 5v, divide by negative 5. Once again, since I flipped it in the first one, probably going to do that in the second one. I don't know why I wrote equal sign there. This is not an equal sign question. I need to flip over my uh, newly made greater than sign. It turns into less than 10. So what I'm looking for is something that I have circles at 10. And I do need to fill it in because I have the line underneath the inequality, so I need to fill that in. And down at negative 8, I need to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to look uh, at my v is greater than negative 8. The v is next to the bigger end, so it goes up. On the other side, v is less than 10 because it's next to the little end, or the v is next to the little end, so it would go down. So I'm looking for this barbell, which is located at d. Not really a difficult problem to do, just need to set it up and write things down. The easiest thing to do, though, is just do this first part, forget the second part, and then pick B. So be very careful that you don't do that. Also, you should pay attention to the graphs. In this case, none of the numbers are the same, except for B and D have a negative 8 in common. But sometimes you'll have the exact same answer, just with different graphs, so make sure you pick the correct one. The next one I'm going to do is number 7. This is one of those compound inequality questions. Uh, so essentially, if I've got these two inequalities, I'm going to take that middle section and split it into two different problems. So my first one is going to say 10n minus 1 is less than 9n plus 1. On the flip side, I'm going to have 9n plus 1 is less than or equal to 10n plus 6. Now I can just solve these. To get the n's together, I need to subtract 9 from the right side. 10 minus 9 is 1. n minus 1, to get rid of minus 1, I need to add. This isn't even a division or a multiply in that last step, so I don't need to flip it over. So n is less than 2. On the flip side, I need to subtract 10n. It gives me negative 1n plus 1. Bring down that 6. I need to subtract 1 from both sides negative 1 n and 6 minus 1 is 5. I need to divide by negative 1. So n and negative 5. But since I divided by that negative in the last step, I need to flip over the inequality so now it's n is greater than negative 5. To graph it, I'm going to go to negative 5. I'm going to circle it. It has the line underneath it on this side, so I do need to fill this one in. And then, since n is next to the big end, I'm going to have things that are greater Remember, only look at the variable to determine which way you're going to graph. Uh, for the other number, I go to 2 and I make the circle. It does not have the line underneath it over here, so I do not need to fill it in. And it says n is next to the little n, which means less than, so n goes this way. So I'm going to look for something that looks a little bit like this, which is, of course, A. Pretty simple. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is number 14. I'm trying to keep these in a nice steady pattern, trying to go sort of quickly so that I can cover them all and not have to wait, you wait an hour to do them. 
This is another one of the compound inequalities, and you can tell because it's got two inequality symbols. So once again, I'm going to split it into two problems. Negative 96 is less than 10p plus 4. And if you remember, if you had this thing where that, uh, you had the type of compound inequality where it's in the middle, you're probably going to have a barbell answer. So really, you could probably figure this one out pretty quickly because it's got to be pretty much A, doesn't it? Uh, on the other side, 10p plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 76. Draw your lines, track 4. You get negative 100. Bring down 10p, divide by 10, and you end up with negative 10 on this side and p right here. Circle this. This is supposed to be a 10, by the way. It's positive, so you don't need to flip it. So it's going to be p is greater than negative 10. On the flip side, I need to do this. Track negative, track 4 from both sides. Uh, negative 76 minus 4 is negative 80. Divide by 10. Uh, negative 8 divided by 10 is negative, negative 80 divided by 10 is negative 8. This is positive. I don't need to flip it. So when I do my graph, I'm going to go to negative 10, make a circle. At the negative 10, there's no line, so I don't need to fill it in. P is next to the big end, so it's going to go up uh, on, at negative 8. Make a circle. There is a line underneath that one, so I'm going to fill that in. P is less than, so I'm going to find this, and it's got to be A. Just like I said, it was going to be A before. That's all you need to do on that problem. It's not really that complicated. Just solve it, and you could have saved yourself tons of time by knowing it's a barbell, but if it has an or, it's going to be a uh, the lines facing opposite. So that should be good. All right, the next one, let me just clear this thing off that we're going to do, is number 29. I'm going to flip over to number 29 really fast here. Uh, so this is a simple solving inequalities question. So I'm going to write it down. 6 minus 5n is less than negative 8n plus 2n. Draw your line. I'm going to combine like terms on the right side. Negative 8 plus 2 gives me negative 6n. I need to get rid of uh, in this situation, I could move this 6 in over, but it's pointless. So I'm going to add 5 in here. Gives me negative 1 in. Bring down my 6. Divide by negative 1. Now I divided by a negative here, so I need to flip that inequality over. n is less than negative 6. Now the real thing that uh, could be weird about this problem is that there isn't all real numbers here. And by the way, uh, because the graph would be at negative 6, I would circle but not fill it in. n is next to the little n, so you go that way. So my answer, of course, would be a. Now the key thing here is that one of the answer choices was all real numbers. Now you need to learn to um, sort of give yourself the benefit of the idea that maybe you don't have to pick that one every time. Some people dive all over every time there's an all real numbers or a no solution, they just automatically pick it. So don't always just dive on it because it seems convenient. I'm just making you aware. Uh, now the next one that we're going to do is number 36. If I can get the computer to respond to what I want to. There we go. This is one of those absolute value equations that everyone hates. However, it's not really that difficult. I kind of didn't really understand what was so hard about it until I thought about it a little bit, and it's because it breaks rhythm from some of the problems that we've done. Now, if, for instance, I gave you this, you could solve that problem really easily. And in order to get this problem into a place that we can actually solve it, we have to treat the big problem just like this little one that I just wrote down with 8x. Instead, of having x there, we're going to be dealing with the idea of having the absolute value. So it might be a good idea where you use a highlight marker and you highlight this section just to remind you that that's where the uh, variable would be in our little um, assuming it's a variable scenario. Draw your line. Now, if that blot was uh, the variable, you would get rid of plus 4 because it would be 8x plus 4. So we're going to get rid of plus 4 by subtracting 4. That makes this 96. Then I bring down 8 times the quantity 2a minus 4, or the absolute value of 2a minus 4. Now, I still can't do anything. You can't go ahead and multiply 8 times 2 or any of that stuff. You need to get rid of times 8. In order to do that, I need to divide by 8. 96 divided by 8 is 12, I do believe. So I'm going to bring that down. Now we are at a place in which 
An absolute value is by itself on one side and equals a constant term or an integer term or a number term or whatever you want to call it. In this case, now I can finally split the problem. So I do 2a minus 4 equals 12 and then I do 2a minus 4 equals negative 12. Solve them separately. Plus 4, 2a is equal to 16. Divide by 2, a is equal to 8. On the other side, add 4, divide by 2, in this case a is equal to negative 4. So I'm going to look for an answer that has 8 and negative 4 in it, and that answer is D. So the real issue here isn't that you can't do the problem. It's just that the problem looks weird compared to what we've been doing. Don't freak out. Just get the absolute value by itself, then split it into two problems, and you'll be absolutely fine. I wouldn't worry about it at all from there. Um, the next one I want to do is number 41. And if you're the type to look ahead, I'm going to do 59 last, but whatever. Um, so this is another one of those absolute value questions, an easier version even. 2 plus the absolute value of 4 minus 5n is equal to 51. So I just draw my line, subtract 2. 51 minus 2 is 49. Bring down my absolute value. Now, I'm going to split it into two problems. 4 minus 5n equals 49, and 4 minus 5n is equal to negative 49. Now the key issue here is you have to get the absolute value by itself. Until that point you can't split it, but once you get it that way, split it. Uh, subtract 4, this would make it 45, divide by negative 5, n is equal to negative 9. On the flip side, I'm going to draw the line, subtract 4. Now when I subtract 4 from negative 49, I get negative 53. I need to divide by that negative 5. And if you just type it in to the old calculator, it might give you some weird answer. So you may, it'll give you like 10.6. You may need to convert that into a uh, fraction form so you can actually see the answer. And then you'll get um, 53 over 5. So my answer to this is, of course, C. Not really a difficult question. Again, it's one of those ones that if you just look at it for a second, shouldn't be a really big deal. But sometimes they are a big deal. I don't know. Sometimes they work out to be a big deal. Shouldn't be. Just get the ver absolute value by itself and then split it. One more to go. And the last one is number 59. And I'm at school, so I'm hoping to get it in before the announcements start because you know I can never hear from there. Now, this is one of the questions that has all real numbers and no solution in it. So I have to be careful to see if I eliminate that variable term. If I do, I have to see whether I have a truth or a lie. Now, draw my line. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 6 is plus 12n. Now when you get to this stage, which in one of my classes we call pork chops and applesauce, I need to get the variables on the same side. So I'm going to get rid of this plus 12n by subtracting 12n. And dun dun dun, I've eliminated variable terms on both sides because 12 minus 12 is 0. Then I'm going to look at the statement that's left over. It says 32 is equal to negative 2. That is not the case at all. This is a lie. When you have a lie, what you need to do is say that you have no solution. What it means is no matter what you plug in for the variable here, you still can't get one side to equal the other. And the original uh, idea of the question because of the equal sign is that they should have, that should happen at least in one situation. It doesn't. So this is no solution. Now if it said something like 32 is equal to 32, then yes, that's an all real numbers situation. As long as it's a true statement, all real numbers. The only time you have this, once again, is when you eliminate the variable completely. If there's still a variable term like it was n a 1n is equal to 2 or whatever, or even if it was 0. If you get 35n equals 0, you just divide by 35, your answer is 0. That's certainly possible. So don't always pick no solution or all real numbers unless there's a situation in which the variable is deleted. So that's it. This should cover all the basic types of problems that are going to be on the midterm. And I think if you went over this and you did a few extra problems on your own that you struggled with, look at the key, blah, 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 you'll be fine. So good luck on your midterm, and I hope you do really well on it.